Welcome into the Thomas Fitch Sports Show. As usual, I'm your host, Thomas Fitch. Really, really exciting episode. Maybe my favorite one of the year. Football inches closer to the spring game. Baseball sits half a game out of the Big 12 um, conference uh, first place with uh, three conference series left. Celebrity guest Aria Bastami joins the show. Really, really awesome interview there. We're going to break down what's happened so far in round one of the NBA playoffs. So let's get started. So we'll start off with football. Um, just a little bit of recap because uh, obviously last week on the the live show uh, we broke down Texas football a lot. So not a bunch to talk to talk about because the spring game obviously hasn't happened yet. Um, we will have a full breakdown of that next week, um, which will be the last um, last episode of the um, of the the semester until summer. So that's exciting and sad all at the same time. Uh, but Football, um, you know, kind of just brief recap. Guys looking good. Colin Johnson, Devin Duvernay um, on offense. Obviously, the quarterbacks, Buchel and Ellinger, have received some high praise um, from Herman, from the, the offensive coordinators, which is good. Defensively, um, B.J. Foster, Breck, and Hager are some of the guys who have received um, some of the praise. And, you know, I, I'm really excited to see this defense play. Obviously, um, it'll be interesting to see how good the quarterbacks play um, just after having another offseason to develop, especially Ellinger. Um, obviously, my take is I think that Ellinger's the one with room to grow, and um, whereas Buchel is kind of at his peak. But, you know, I say that, and the coaches still say that, that Buchel's made good development, so that's always great. I mean, even though I think I would rather Ellinger at quarterback, you still want the competition to be there, and it sounds like that's, that is there. Um, haven't heard much about either Thompson, uh, Casey Thompson or Cameron Rising, the, the freshman quarterbacks. Um, but personally to me, I think that's good. I don't want to have to start a freshman quarterback again for the third year in a row. Um, a true freshman, I would like to go with, um, you know, Ellinger or Bouchel. And the, the funny thing about Ellinger is he's only a sophomore, but it kind of feel, I think, I don't know exactly why, maybe it was because he had a lot of hype before he came in and was an early enrollee, but he, he definitely feels older than a freshman. I think people forget that he is just a freshman and he only has one year of experience. But um, and I think a lot of people forgot that last year when um, he struggled late in games. It's like, this guy's a true freshman. There are very few true freshmen um, playing in college football and playing well. You get a lot of redshirt freshmen playing well, and so I think he gets compared to successful redshirt freshmen, but uh, I think... The good news for him is there's still a lot of development left, and it sounds like he's been developing well. But um, I say I'm excited to see the defense, and then I talk about offense for 10 minutes. Uh, but I am really excited to see the defense that get out there, see those young guys, see B.J. Foster, Caden Stearns, um, all those other um, recruits just kind of come in, fly around. I'm bummed that Gary Johnson is hes one of the, the players out um, among guys like Kyle Porter um, and, and some others. Uh, uh, P.J. Locke got a stinger. He wants to play, um, but he's still questionable. But, um, you know, Brecken Hager was a name I brought up here. There, You know, there's a guy kind of like Gary Johnson, like P.J. Locke, um, who's, you know, upperclassman, can really step up into the leadership role and also can just fly around and hit some people. And so really exciting to see that, really exciting to get to watch football again. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't get rained out. Hopefully the rain doesn't mess with that. There is talks of that. But, should be a great game. Um, I will say this. If there is bad weather, uh, the attendance will probably be low because of the bad weather. Don't listen to the Aggies and the Sooners on Twitter talking about how high their attendance was because last week was a perfect weekend for it, whereas Texas do, does it this week. And I'm sure they did that because they didn't want to be the same weekend as OU and a and which was smart because obviously as the biggest school in the, the Texas-Oklahoma region, you would want to have your own day. You let the smaller schools do what they do on their, you know, when they want it. But, you know, they they got the better day, whereas I think the idea of doing the game under the lights, I think that's a, a good idea. I think that kind of adds an element of fun. It kind of, and I think just for the players, um, obviously it's still much less pressure than a real end game, you know, when you're actually playing a game. But I do think being under the lights, there's fans there. It, it gives more simulation than a scrimmage in practice. So I think that was a great idea. 
um, by the coaches. Um, and we're, we're um, you know, speaking of which, like I had said at the beginning, Arya Bastami's coming on, and he's, um, through his, his rapping, he's gotten to know a lot of the coaches. So um, uh, we're going to get to hear about, about all the coaches and stuff in a little bit. Uh, let's move on to baseball because that's what's going on right now. Team's playing good. Like I mentioned, half a game back of first place in the Big 12. Um, they win the series against Oklahoma, which was a um, really good win. Both uh, went, went on Friday and Saturday were comebacks, then lose on Sunday. Cody Clemens, Zach Zubia, some of those guys who are really batting well right now. I would say my worry for the baseball team is the pitchers, um, especially the starters, because it feels like this team has really struggled to start games. And it is... It's not just the pitchers, it's the batters need to get hot early on. But, you know, in both of the, um, both the first two games that Texas won, um, and it, what, in those two games and the game that Texas lost, OU started off um, early and, and started off with a lead. And then in the first two games, obviously, Texas comes back and wins. In the, in the game on Sunday, they didn't, and obviously, they lose. And so if Texas can get off to a stronger start, then you're not having to... Um, be under that pressure at the end of the games. And you can make comebacks against a team like OU, who um, I'm not sure if they're still ranked, but they were ranked going into that series like 21st. But when you actually get to playing teams like Texas has Texas Tech coming up, TCU coming up, and even though those teams haven't played great in conference, they're still good teams. And then once, especially once you get into the tournament, you're not going to be able to come back from every game. And, you know, you get to games where you really can't lose a game. And so... Um, the starting pitchers have to step up, and the team has to get um, hot early. But I do think that uh, there's there's one there's three conference, one non-conference series left. New Orleans is this weekend, and then you have Texas Tech, West Virginia, and TCU to finish off conference schedule before you go to the Big 12 tournament. Um, I definitely think that the Tech and TCU series will be very telling um, because other than OU, these are the – Best two teams. They're both teams are behind Texas in the standings, but I think that uh, again, both teams have played poorly in Big Twelve. I do think that they are probably maybe the best. At least them and Oklahoma are the best teams in the conference, and so I think those will be telling series about how much this team has actually grown, or if the growth um, that appears to be there is only because the conference um, has been a little top heavy. Um, but we will see. A um, couple series left. Um, I will say this, I do feel very confident now, especially after that series win against Oklahoma, about this team making the postseason. There was a little worries kind of going into conference play when it looked like the Big 12 was a lot more dangerous. But sitting half a game back out of first place, really worst comes to worst, Texas finishes in like fourth place in the Big 12. And um, unless they just lose out and like can't even win in the, the Big 12 tournament, I think I think they went if they if they went two of the last three series. I think they are definitely safe um, as far as being in the tournament going into the Big Twelve tournament. I think if they can finish first in the Big Twelve and maybe win the Big Twelve tournament, then they have a chance of actually maybe maybe hosting a regional. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, actually, I, I do think I think if Texas is ranked um, maybe twenty three right now, you got to be. I mean, it's essentially it's the top sixteen teams. Um, and so if I, I definitely think Texas wins the big 12, wins the big 12 championship, I think there's a good chance that they do make it into the, the 16 and host regional. So, and, and that's, that's a really Testament to David Pierce. And I think it was the same thing last year by Pierce, um, where it's just a, a really impressive second half of the season and really uh, good growth over the year would have loved to have started off better, but again, young team, the guys are developing now. So to be able to get, and be a number one seed. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if the team was to get to that, and even you know being a two seed, but being you know at this point, if the players, if the if the College World Series were to start now, Texas would be you know one of the better two seeds in the tournament. So even just being in that position shows how much they've grown, um, and is really a testament to David uh, Pierce's coaching. Anyways, coming up right after this, we got Arya Bastami joining us. So let's send it over for that interview. All right, we now welcome on celebrity guest Arya Bastami. Once again, <laughs> Fame, famous, stop. famous rapper. Um, for those of you who've lived in a hole, 
Uh, <laughs> oh <my laughs> uh, Arya yeah. has kind of blown up on Twitter a little with, bit. with rap videos. Uh, probably the most, the one that got you the most um, popularity early on was the, the one with all the new Texas recruits, the yeah. hashtag Revolution 18. Yes. And you got to go in and work with Herman and yeah, Brian Carrington yeah. and the staff. So Shoot at DKR, it was wild. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that video. Yeah, um, well, the the video came about in probably the craziest way. Anytime I explain the story, I really feel like it's a lie. I really do. Um, but I had, obviously, I had done the NBA rap in October after that. Right. I kind of went dormant. Uh, but then in, se- in the second semester, I did a rendition to God's Plan, and Kerwin liked it. Snoop. Kerwin, yeah, Snoop. Uh, he had liked it, and then he shared it on his page, and I think that's how it diffused to like some of the UT athletes. Yeah. And so after that, Sam Ellinger had followed me of the football team, and then he DM'd me. He was like, yo, man, I really think you should do a football one. And I was like, like obviously, you know, I'm basketball is my number right, one sport. Right. So I was like, I don't know, man. I'm like, <laughs> maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll try it. I mean, you are. I mean, you're freaking Sam. So, I mean, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. Uh, and so I did it. And uh, it worked relatively well. That video popped off. And that same night, I got contacted by uh, Brian Carrington, by Matt Lange, the the creative yeah. director of, the, of Texas football. And... Um, yeah, they brought me in the next day, gave me a tour of the facility, lost my mind like <laughs> five or six times, met Herman, lost my mind again, took a picture with Herman, lost my mind again. It, it was just an absolute surreal experience. And then they asked me, I'll never forget it. They asked yeah. me, it was Herman, it was Matt and um, and myself in a room. Mm-hmm. And we were in Herman's office and Herman looks at me dead in the face and he goes, Arya, do you think you can do a National Signing Day recruitment rap? And... That was Tuesday. National Signing yeah. Day, as you know, was the next yeah. day. And oh, I was yeah. Like, I had, like, six assignments due. <laughs> and it was wild stuff. And I had, to, like, 28 people's names that I had to, like, right. make a rap right. about, shoot the video for. And I was like, Tom, absolutely. And so I ran <laughs> I home. I, I ran it. home. I finished as many, uh, all of my Canvas assignments. I <laughs> yeah. uh, submitted all of them and then worked four or five hours on that rap to get it down. Wow. Yeah, it was wild. And then we shot the video the next day. <laughs> Well, t- tell me about your your process for writing a rap. What what kind of comes first? Is it music? Is it lyrics? Um, it definitely music, man. Yeah. It's definitely the instrumental because yeah. you I you cannot at least for me. I know everybody's different, but for right. me, I cannot write uh, a rap um, without a beat because like the beat is your is how you're gonna approach the flow and the cadence of yeah. it. So without that, you're really not gonna. I mean, for me, I'm not, I'm not gonna have something good without the beat first right do you feel that like you've gotten better at writing and now like you know getting stuff to rhyme kind of getting everything to kind of fit together yeah luckily i i'd say i haven't had writer's block yet so fingers crossed it continue not yeah seriously (laughs) knocking on wood wood. good podcast yeah (laughs) knocking on wood here um hopefully i don't get writer's block anytime soon but it has gotten a little bit easier but i mean you know we had met in a journalism class yeah. like, journalism is our major it's right. what we're doing so it's writing has always been a part of my life whether yeah. it be in the aspect of making things rhyme together with you know what is it like triplet flows or whatever yeah. it is yeah. um or just writing you know a narrative piece or a feature story whatever it is like it, writing is something that's always been a part of my life so yeah um, yeah, I mean, the process has gotten a little bit easier yeah. with that. Well, you may be sworn to secrecy about some of this stuff. I don't, okay. I don't exactly okay. know how much you could say. Yeah, ask but, a question. Too I mean, good. talk kind of about working behind the scenes mm. with, with Brian and Hermit. Like, how, who did you work the most with behind the scenes? Yeah, uh, well, behind the scenes was uh, Matt Lange, uh, mm-hmm. Derek Ochoa, um, and people like the people of the, the – pretty much the social media department yeah. for Texas football. Those are the people that I worked with the most um, right now. I've got things coming up that are that are lined up with... Uh, with uh, I, I can explain to you the premise of it. Okay, okay. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll break in news uh, here uh, on the Thomas Fitzgerald yes, show. No, you are actually the first person that... Wow, this is, so this is wow. Breaking. This is breaking. This is awesome. Um, so the premise, <laughs> breaking news. The premise that I had, and I will say this, I won't give out any names, but okay. the people that I'm working with are part of... Texas sports, Texas football, and other sports as well. Um, but the premise of it is is essentially after every game, yes, you have the alma mater and you have the fight song, right. which is great. And then what do they always play? It's the, is it the DJ Khaled song, All I Do Is Win, Win, yes, Win, No Matter yeah. What. 
And so for me personally, I was like, man, like that's played out. Like it's been yeah. four or five years of listening to as great as that song is. Don't get me wrong, DJ Khaled. If you are listening, <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong. What up, uh, DJ? Yeah, what, what's up, DJ Khaled? Um, <laughs> it's a great song. But I was I was talking with a couple of people. I was like, man, how great would it be if we made a track? that they would play after every game. And it doesn't have to be necessarily about football, basketball. It's mm. just about UT. Yeah. And so the people that I had talked to were like, that's a wild idea. And so there are things in the works for that. Yeah. So this summer, this summer is going to be interesting, man. Wow. But yeah, that is the that is the idea that I can break to you. I can't tell you who I'm working <laughs> with, but that is the idea. Wow, that is, yeah. that's, that's so exciting. Very, um, yeah, very exciting. How, how much involvement did you get with the players? Uh, I, I got to meet a, a good amount of them. Now, in the shooting of the music video with Texas football, I didn't I didn't get to meet them. It was right. like all solo shots. Yeah. Um, but I had actually met them the day prior when I was getting the tour of the place. Uh, I had met I had met. Uh, did I run into Caden that day? Yeah, I ran into Caden yep. Stairs. Yeah. I ran into him. Uh, BJ Foster ran into him. Yeah. Brennan Eagles. Brennan Eagles, man, it was so <laughs> funny. I ran into him and I like reach out my hand like, "What's up, boss? Like, nice to meet you. I'm Aria." And Matt was walking with me, and he's like, "Hey, this is the this is the guy." Yeah. And then Brennan goes, "Who?" And I was, I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> I was like, "Oh god!" Um, and then and then Matt explains like, "This is the guy who rapped on Twitter." He's like, "Oh man, you look completely different in person." I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but I was, I was like, at that point, I'll take it, man. Yeah. I was like, "What's up, Brennan? Like, cool to meet you, bro. Like, hope you do well next year. Like, I'm excited to watch you right, play." Right. But yeah, it was it was cool, man. I met I met a good amount of the players. Still haven't met Sam yet, though. Really? Yeah, still haven't met Sam yet, which which is uh, which is rough. I mean, yeah, he's the guy that reached he, out. He I'm is waiting to meet my boy. I've been wow. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. you had met him. I haven't met Sam yet. No, man, that's crazy. Okay, so if you're walking down the street right now, mm. you see Tom Herman. Yeah, you go up to him, give him a bro hug, or you yeah. just like kind of like say, "Oh no, hey. we're dapping up." Okay, we're okay. dapping so y'all, up. We're bro y'all, y'all, y'all are still yeah. close. Yes. No, we we we. Talk well, I mean, obviously, everything. you're still working on. Yeah, we're working on some stuff. Yeah. Too. Uh, but no, we, we we text every now and again. We talk. I hope to see him. I texted him uh, actually like an hour and a half ago. I was like, hey, can't wait for the Saturday for spring game. Oh, my like, God. Hopefully we'll get a picture in and yeah. stuff. But, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Tom, Tom's, a, uh, Tom's the homie. Tom, wow. Tom is the homie. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. Which, yeah. how other than social media and Tom Herman, did yeah. you get to be around the other kind of coaches, staff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, Who, I met yeah. um, oh, man. Who did I meet? I, I, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> Herb, man, Herb, Herb is crazy. Yeah. He started, oh, yeah. yeah, he started rapping for me. Uh, oh, he, he Herb was, Hand. Yeah, he, Herb <laughs> Hand, he's the man, dude, he like, he walked in and like, Herman was in his office chilling, yeah. I was talking with Matt, we were going through like, what we wanted to right. do for the music video, and Herb just walks in and he just starts going in on like some, it was like a 19, I think it was Eric B and Rock Kim, like an oh, old school gosh. rap song, but he had it memorized to a T. And he's wow. like, the word, the player. And he just starts rapping. I'm like, whoa! Like, it was oh wild. Yeah, Herb, Herb is really cool. I met Craig as well, Craig Noir. Yeah. I'm, oh, my gosh. I I met more coaches. I really can't. Orlando, Beck, any of them? Dude, Beck followed me on Twitter. Still haven't met him yet. Really? Yeah. I, I've met Tim Beck. I have not met Tim. He shook his hand I'm, at the I'm, I'm not. Wow. <laughs> I, I, cool. I, I started walking through, you know, their facilities. I don't know how yeah. I got in there. Yeah, he, well, goes, <laughs> he goes, who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm Thomas Fish. I'm a journalism major in <laughs> orientation. <laughs> that's, that's okay. A, that's amazing. That's amazing. No, I haven't met Beck yet, yeah. but he followed me. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's relatively – that's pretty much it. I mean, there was a bunch – there were a bunch of more coaches that I didn't get to introduce myself yeah. to, but they were walking by, and I got to see them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but so of all of those, Herb Hand was the most fun. Her, yeah, Herb Hand – him and I had a couple conversations. He, like, showed me uh, a couple of, um, like, songs that he used to be really interested in, wow. hip-hop. Yeah, no, he's he's an awesome guy. Yeah. yeah Herb is awesome, man. That's cool. Um, you know, so people are talking about, obviously, Revolution 18, yeah. but – you know, and how much players are enjoying Coach Herman. Yeah. Was that evident from your experience with him? Like, I, and is he as fun as people say, or is he kind of like I'm going to be professional and delegate the fun to everyone? No, else? well, I mean, with me, I think I think the great thing about Herman, he knows his audience very yeah. well, and so he knows I'm a college student as well. Yeah. And so the first thing he did when we walked into his office, he goes, uh, "You want to see this grill that Paul Wall made me?" Because obviously, when he coached yeah. at Houston, he yeah, won yeah. the Chick Fil A Bowl. Paul Wall got made him right. and a customized grill. So he like shows <laughs> that's, that's the, grill. the first thing. Yeah, and he shows the wow. grill and then he goes like this. I'm like, man, like <laughs> what the heck is that? Like you're Tom Herman. Like I was not expecting that out of all things. Um, 
but no, he's he's an awesome guy. I I think the the one of the best things about him, um, obviously in terms of his personality is like I said, he knows his audience very yeah. well. So he knows who he's talking to. Right. And he'll treat you as such, which is great yeah. to have because it's like you're talking to a peer rather than the coach of Texas football. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that's, yeah, no, he's awesome. That's really cool. Any chance we get? Well, obviously you kind of talked about a little little part two kind of thing coming, yeah. but what about? Little OU diss track maybe coming in the future. Maybe man, like I, <laughs> it's it's really funny to me. I will get a lot of flack on um, tracks that I'll post on Twitter, like Twitter videos that I'll post that aren't sports related. Yeah, I'll get like just general flack on like you know it looks like G Easy, it looks like Logic, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I will get a lot of sports rivalry flack every yeah. time I do a sports rap. Right, route. right. Uh, but no one will really, like, talk about, like, everyone will say, like, the flow was really good. Like, when I post a regular video, right. it's like, oh, the flow was trash, or, like, all this stuff, like, yeah. all this negativity. But with with a sports rap, no one really comments or critiques huh. the rap. They just critique the fact that I'm <laughs> representing UT. Like, <laughs> I've had so many hate OU account or, like, OU hate Texas accounts yeah. like it's been wild wow they'll just like comment or like quote and be like this sucks oh you forever I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> cool oh it's, but I, I get a lot of that but um yeah no possibly man I mean the Red River rivalry is obviously it's a beautiful thing yeah uh, oh, even yeah. though you know we, we've we lost a couple now um <laughs> a couple of hey, lot hey, uh, Baker's yeah. gone yeah Baker's gone which is has, has he reached more. out to you Baker <laughs> no <laughs> I, the only uh, <laughs> that would be wild if he did uh, the only person from OU that has, I've, I guess, almost interacted with, yeah. I haven't really interacted, but uh, Trey Young uh, favorited and, okay. yeah, favorited one of my Twitter videos. That was it. Right. Yeah. Right. So Trey Young, cool yeah. dude. Yeah, he, that. He, Thanks, he, he's, he's like the Baker Mayfield you can hate. Trey Young, it's like, okay, you go to OU, so I can hate you for that, but like. Yeah. As a person, you yeah, seem like a fine man. Chill, yeah. yeah, yeah, you seem like a cool dude. Speaking of basketball, you did, yes. you made a, a, a men's basketball rap, yes. right? Yes. Was was there any talks of making a video or anything? No, that was the thing I was so sad yeah. about. Yeah, I was because I'm I'm really close with uh, Coleman, right? With Matt on the team, and I'm I'm pretty cool with uh, Kerwin as well. And yeah. I met most of the players, and yeah. they're all like standout guys. They're yeah. all awesome. Um, but no, I mean, obviously, being a UT, I followed Texas basketball like yeah. years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah so yeah. I was hoping like when when I did everything with Texas football, I was like, all right, because obviously Texas is a football oriented yeah. school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay. Texas football got that like that was amazing. Hopefully basketball will reach out after right. I do this video. Nothing, and I was wow. like, well, yeah, I know, no follow back. Nothing. Shaka, yeah, come Shaka. on, Shaka, yeah, dude, Shaka, what? help, help what? your boy yeah, out, dude. Help your boy out, man. Shaka, I'm trying to meet you, dude. I mean, I've, I've, we've met him right. before, but I'm but trying not to like, like, conversate with him. Yeah, yeah, um, that's because Shaka seems like a really chill awesome dude. dude. I mean, I'm not gonna like diss track on Shaka, no, no, Shaka absolutely, not. absolutely not. Uh, we are a very as, I've I've ranted against people who want to fire Shaka, so yeah. definitely very pro yeah, Shaka. Yeah, we're pro Shaka. But I think out here, man. I mean, I definitely think the thing that football has is kind of you know with bringing in Herman that kind of whole revolution of the whole social media department. Yeah, for and, sure. You know, and I think that's been there more with football than basketball. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, having all the social media creators and editors and stuff kind of helps yeah. with that. But no, I agree with you, man. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can. I, Work out something with basketball in the yeah. future, man. That would be awesome to do something with them. Yeah, maybe even a little women's basketball. I'd love I mean, to. Brooke and Ariel are gone. Yeah, they are. But um, there, hey, they, Texas women's basketball got some good recruits coming actually, in. That's true. And I will say this. I yeah. will say this. Brooke, if you're watching, <laughs> I did not get a follow back on Twitter. Oh, I got Brooke. a follow back from everybody else. Brooke. I did not get a follow back from on oh, Twitter from Brooke. But fine. I mean, it's cool. I get it. I understand. Off to bigger and better things with the sparks, but like, come on, like, what the heck? Dude? I'm oh, out here. I'm just man. waiting for a follow back. <laughs> man, Brooke, Shaka, y'all, y'all gotta talk. Y'all yeah, gotta talk to Arya. Uh, so you, you have been interviewed by a whole lot of other yes people, probably a lot more famous yes. than me. Well, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stop. Uh, but which, which of them has been the coolest? Most like, holy crap! Like, I'm being interviewed by. In in regards to notoriety, man. I mean, honestly, the horn was really cool. Yeah, getting interviewed by them was awesome. Uh, MEC Austin was really cool as well. Uh, I mean, in in regards to questions, yeah, I'd say this is definitely the most fun. This is, <laughs> and, and you know what? You know what? I will say this for I don't know how many people are seeing me. Four, three. There three, were three. No three, one right now. No, no one right now. But people will watch it later. Whoever is watching, my parents this watch. Is, okay. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Bitch, uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic interview that we have here. No, this is definitely my favorite. Man. This is really fun. Um, 
but yeah, no. In in regards to like, holy crap, I'm yeah. actually doing this. Um, definitely MEC Austin because they had yeah. me like they were like, where do you want to shoot the video wow. for our feature piece? And I was like, can we do it here on Speedway? And they're like, yeah. So we sat literally on the benches at right wow. by Speedway, and like there were people like walking by and That's waving so and stuff. Cool. And so yeah, that was definitely like the biggest like wow, like this is really really happening. You just right got to sit there and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah like people <laughs> are waving and I like wave back. But yeah, no, that was that was definitely an awesome moment. Yeah. Man. Do you get recognized a bunch walking around campus now? A little bit, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, it's weird. I didn't get, I, I did get some recognition yeah. from the sports raps, but nothing yeah. really until I did the uh, rendition of Goosebumps by Travis yeah. Scott. I don't know if you saw that oh, one, but... I but, uh, saw them all. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> um... But no, after after that one picked up, that's when like I'll have a bunch of people um, like they'll stop me and like we'll talk for a little bit. I, when people ask to take pictures, man, like I still say this now because it's so yeah. weird. Yeah. Because I'm just like, dude, I'm turning in assignments on Canvas <laughs> just like you. Like I am no different. And I I find it so funny, man. I I take it in the same aspect of you know however far you take this podcast right. thing with with interviews and stuff like that. Once that notoriety comes, because obviously you're a hard worker, it'll get there. Yeah. Um. But once that happens, you, it's going to be the same experience for you. Like, people will stop you and people will talk to you about this stuff, and you're going to be like, what the heck? You know what I mean? Because you're just yeah. doing what you love. And so it's the same thing with yeah. me. I'm just yeah, yeah, doing what I yeah. love. And f- the fact that people are being supportive is just the best part of it. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. How other, other than UT players, how many other like athletes have reached out to you? Um. I mean, we know we know Dame Lillard. Dame, that Dame, retweet. yeah, Dame. When Dame quoted it, man, <laughs> it said "stupid hard." I still like it's still <laughs> in my head, dude. He, oh my gosh, still. I mean, listen, Dame. Um, I love you, man. But Drew Holiday is serving you up right now, bro. Like, I'm gonna need you to step up. I, I like boosted you in front of all my boys. I was like, Dame's got it in the bag. Yep. Drew's putting up numbers, but um, but no, I athletes that have reached out, I. Oh man, um, there I wouldn't say reached out, but they've definitely like they've favorited yeah. videos and stuff, and they've re- uh, retweeted a couple of things. Um, uh, <laughs> Prince of Bukamara, which is like he's so funny, man. Like, because <laughs> I, I mean, I, I knew of him, right? And I never really watched him that often. Yeah. But like when he followed me, and then he like tweeted. Oh, like, so he follows you? Oh, he follows wow. me, and he tweeted. Um, if you can find it, he tweeted. He was like, "I'm calling it now. Ari is gonna do a song with at Drake." I like, wow! What? <laughs> I was like, dude, first of all, no way. Like, there's no way that happens. Ugh. But, um, but no. When he tweeted that, he's he's definitely the funniest dude to follow. And then, um, Kenny Vaccaro. Oh yeah, Kenny Vaccaro. Yes, he followed. He was my seven thousand follower. Wow! So I DM'd him. I was like, dude, thank you so much. <laughs> like, you're an absolute Longhorn legend. Like, I love yeah. you. And he was like, "Hook him!" I was like, "Ah, Kenny!" Wow. But yeah, no, a couple of athletes have reached out, which is awesome, yeah. and so hopefully more to come. Yeah, hopefully. You you talk about Dame. Yeah. But you're also a big Kobe Bryant fan. Huge. Who who's your favorite between those two? All time, it's Kobe. Yeah. Dame is a very close second, though. Yeah, and Just, he's and he's still got career left. Yeah, no, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of, of co- a lot of career left. Um, but no, Kobe is definitely one of those guys for me. Like growing up, I. You know, everyone, I think, after Jordan came, or even prior to Jordan, because, yeah. I mean, it was really the Magic and the Bird era. Right. But um, everyone has their Jordan, as I yeah. like to say. And so Kobe was my Jordan. I know a lot of people will say LeBron. Kuholtz will say LeBron is his Jordan, <laughs> uh, or better than Jordan. That's what he likes That's what he likes to say. I'm not, I'm oh, I know. Oh, I, uh, I know. The words I know. are not in my mouth. <laughs> I am not saying I, that. I definitely um, gave him crap for that when yeah. he came on. <laughs> but, but, no, um... But no, Kobe is that guy for me, man. Growing yeah. up watching basketball, he was the first person I ever watched, and I just fell in love with the game because of him. So yeah, yeah, Kobe's definitely that guy. That's cool. Um, so you're not only a talented rapper, Thank you're you. a talented journalist. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, fellow member of, of TSTV Sports. Yes. So where do you kind of see your future taking you? You know, is it one or another, a little of both? I I really hope it's a little of both. Yeah. I really hope that you know, with with doing the sports raps, that it's you know, it's something that we can, that can be looked at upon in the future. Maybe, I don't know, man. It, obviously, the, the greatest goal of mine would be to rap on ESPN. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like a little, little prime down yeah, yeah, playoffs, yeah. but like oh not as bad as those guys. Oh my gosh. Those guys. Uh, listen, I'm not going to get your money. Well, man. respect to ESPN. ESPN well is respect. great, great. But ABC and ESPN. Guys, but I, 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 listen, man, I don't it's know. It's just like they're reading words off the page with this, like, like, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Saturday yeah. night. I'm like, oh, yeah, on. dude, it's get some I, emotion. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of their work. It is what it is, though. I mean, yeah. respect to them. They yeah. got their money, and yeah. so that's awesome. But no, hopefully, I mean, with with seeing them, it's definitely and like with J Cole as well. Right. I know he did something. Uh, by the way, J Cole album coming out tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited that's about right. that. The album art looks ridiculous. But <laughs> um, but no, with him doing it as well, I think it's like. You know, channeling a, an avenue for people to you know intertwine the two. And sports and rap have always been right. you know coinciding very well. Right. So hopefully one day in the future, man, I can do a little bit of both. Yeah, that would yeah. be that would be the dream. That'd well, be and awesome. we we got your rap as uh, on on TSTV. Oh, last Steve, week. yeah, that was Steve. a little, little background for the awesome. little, for the highlights. That was awesome. I wish I I wish I was able to record that in an actual studio because I felt <laughs> so bad. Steve was like, "Yeah, can we do it?" I was like, "I." Of course, I right. just feel bad because it was in like it was in a room, you know what I mean? It wasn't like recorded on yeah. mics or anything. Yeah. But no, that was really cool. Steve showed me that, and I was yeah. like, "That's awesome, man." You you bring up studio. Are there any studio album anything? There, there are <laughs> there are things in the works, man. I will tell you. So, um, uh, breaking break. Oh, break, breaking news. breaking breaking. Uh, I've um, there is definitely gonna be some studio time to come, wow. which is great because I've. Like like I said again, man. Like luckily, there's been no writer's block, so hopefully the writing yeah. process can continue, and I can yeah. write on some original beats and stuff, right. which will be really exciting. And I'm I'm looking at driving like an EP, something okay. like that, in the summertime. Okay. Uh, prior to that, um, I'm gonna have a single of a uh, new freezer by Rich oh, the Kid yeah. and Kendrick. I oh yeah. Heard that track. Love that uh, song. A remix to that. That will be the last track that I really do. Yeah. And then the summer I'll do a little EP, and then near the end of the summer is when I was telling you about that that UT rap. Wow. That so I'm this the for. summer of Bastami. Hopefully, man. Hopefully. You, uh, views from the five one two. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully people will people at UT will continue supporting yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, let's talk yeah. a little NBA. Please. You know, you're a big NBA fan. Please, uh, yes. Before we get to the playoffs, talk a little Lakers, because you are a big Lakers fan. Yeah. How close are they to being back? Is it is it kind of a process, like with the 76ers, where eventually they could get to that point? It, it does look very synonymous to what the Sixers did, and I think uh, Commissioner Silva, they're going to address that and try and right. change the lottery process now, <laughs> which is like, dang. Uh, but I mean, hey, yeah, having it after the Lakers. Uh, yeah. So I'm okay with yeah. it. Um, but no... It's it's tough to say that they're going to be close. I know they're still eyeing LeBron. They're they're making reports that Kawhi wants to be in LA. I'm like, relax <laughs> with all this. Yeah. Um, Kawhi may just retire at this point. I have that, no idea. That's the, yeah, the that's most a, wild, a wild situation, thing man. Yeah, I've ever, ever yeah, heard I'm, of. I've never seen anything. I don't think anyone has no, seen no. anything like that before. But um, you know, I think the talent is definitely there. There's a lot of young talent. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. With Hart and with Ingram, if Ingram can, the only the only problem with Brandon Ingram for me, man, is just size. I just mm-hmm. wanted to see him get a little bit more muscle. Yeah. Um. I think Lonzo will develop into a great. He's already a great stat filler. Right. Hopefully, he does more scoring because yeah. the Lakers will need that. But he's, I mean, he's young. I mean, I think, very young. And I I think as long as the Lakers don't try to like treat him as he's the next Kobe Bryant mm. and just try to treat him as, hey, let's build this guy up and get him as good as he can be. Exactly. I think then then he's going to be a great player. But if I agree. If you try to hype this guy up and he's going to be the next, he's got to be doing this at year two and this, yeah. you know. It's, it's not going to work out that's no. too much. That's an unsurmountable pressure on someone's shoulders that you yeah. can't overcome. So, no, I agree with you 100%. I think the Lakers are close, man. I think two to three years. Yeah. I think next year hopefully we'll be in the playoffs as an eighth or seventh seed. And then probably lose in five or swept yeah. or get swept, yeah. but yeah. that's okay. Um, I think two to three years we will be a mid-round contender. So okay. second round, yeah. get eliminated, maybe go to the Western Conference Finals. Okay. That's what I'm. That's what I'm predicting. And and do you see LeBron on that team? I'm gonna say this, man. I hope not. <laughs> I really hope for wow. his for his legacy. Yeah. I want him to stay in Cleveland. Yeah. It just so it, you you think he he'll actually stay in Cleveland. I believe so because legacy. Yeah. Um, unless LeBron really doesn't care, because I feel like when he went to Miami, it was sure his legacy was a minor factor. Yeah. But it was the fact he wanted to ring. Like yeah. that was the yeah. Yeah, overarching yeah, yeah. thing that he wanted. Now yeah. that he's got that, you yeah. know, he's gotten it three times now. Right. I feel like he's done what he's wanted to do for himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he always says he's chasing Jordan's ghost and right. all this stuff, but like, you know, at the end of the day, he is one of the greatest to ever do it. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And I think. For his legacy's sake, for the argument of it, um, he's gonna stay in Cleveland. Plus, it's home for him. But yeah. if he if he goes anywhere else, like obviously, I wouldn't. 
who's going to mine? I'm like, yes. LeBron, if you want to come to the Lakers, yeah. I like, feel free no, to come do, through. Do not come to my team. I don't <laughs> yeah, want yeah, you. No, I, I don't think anyone would say that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but no, I, I think he's going to stay in Cleveland. I hope he does. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, speaking of Cleveland, they are, yes. they're tied in the series with the Pacers. Yeah. Blown out in game one. Come wow. back. Close, close win yeah. in game two. Is this going to be a close series, or is this LeBron's time to just take it over and win in five? So the thing about it for me, the – I was looking at LeBron, and I was telling everybody this prior to the playoffs. I was like, once he does zero dark 23, like, he's going beast mode. Right, Like, he's right. going to destroy everybody. Yeah. Uh, game one was – it wasn't even a wake-up call for that because he just was not aggressive. Yeah. He didn't really shoot. I think he shot, like, two shots in the first quarter. Yeah. And then the second, he turned it on and then ended up getting a triple-double. And then yesterday, he had 20 in the first quarter. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So you, <laughs> obviously, it's all there. Right. Um, no, I mean, I think – I think it's going to go to six. I think Cavs mm. won in six in this one. But Indiana is a very, very formidable yeah. opponent, man. Like, they look great. Um, Oladipo is a monster. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, their their future looks yes, bright. Yes, they're another one of those good young teams if they can keep everybody there. Yeah, they they look really, really good. Um, but, no, I think I think the Cavs are going to go to the finals. Uh, the only wow. team wow. The, only, the only team I would really see stopping them mm-hmm. – um, in the East, and this is wild to me to say this right huh. now, but if the Celtics continue doing huh. what they're doing, yeah, it, it's just, I, I haven't seen, because like, when Kyrie went down, you know, right. first of all, when Gordon went down, <laughs> in the very beginning of the season, Sheesh. you're like, well, they're done. Yeah, Kyrie carried like an absolute yeah. beast. Yeah, he did. And so they're like, okay, they're playing ridiculously yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah. The Raptors are playing ridiculously well too, and I think their bench is deep, but yeah. I just don't know how they're going to come in the second round. Right, right. You know, when they make it there. Um, but no, I think I think the team that's going to come out of the East is going to be the Cavs. I believe in the West, and everyone kills me for saying this. I think the Western Conference Finals. This is I'm sticking by it. Yeah. I think it's going to be Golden State, which is everyone okay? Uh, shocker, uh, shocker, and Oklahoma City. Oh, I think please. they're going to beat please the give Rockets me. in the second round. Just, I I need one of my teams to keep going in the playoffs. Spurs yeah. aren't. Spurs yeah, are Spurs done. Are, Spurs are done. I mean, yeah, man. The Spurs, Spurs are. They're not looking that good. If I don't know what's going on with Kawhi, man. I just want to well, know. I'll, 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 I'll say this take. I gave this take when I was on uh, guest on the Bizarre Radio Sports Show uh-huh. uh, yesterday. But and and this could be completely harebrained. Who knows? No. This is this is theory, kind of from my dad, who's a okay. doctor. Okay. Because I had possibly if, if what my dad thinks Kawhi has, I had the same thing after I broke my leg. Mm-hmm. And it's some sort of nerve damage in there uh-huh. that, like, as far as, like, physically when you look at it and take x-rays, nothing's wrong. But the nervous system, like, doesn't perceive that. And so there's still a lot of pain. Oh, wow. So when I broke my leg, my like, I could not walk yeah. for, like, a month afterwards, even though structurally there was nothing wrong. Wow. Because there was just a bunch of nerve damage. Yeah. And so there's a possibility that something like that is it's going happening. on with Kawhi mm-hmm. where, you know, as far as, you know, structurally, nothing wrong there. That's yeah. why he's been cleared to go back. But he still has that pain, and it's something in your nerves, and your head. I Doctor right. stuff. I'm yeah. a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know this. But. I know I know how to do a good podcast. I know if you <laughs> knock on wood, you say knock on wood so the people can hear. <laughs> I don't know how to That's do a, doctor yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I agree with you but, 100%, man. So I, that could be what's going on. Yeah. And, and if that is what it is, it's like, who knows what the recovery is. Yeah. Um, no, that's a, that's a really good point. I didn't I did not know that. Yeah, but it, it's no, just really hard because the communication hasn't been there. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's another that's thing been the, too. It, it, and some of it's maybe just the Spurs don't want to talk. Maybe there's been more communication there, and the Spurs are just saying, "Hey, we don't care right. about you. You make your drama." Mm-hmm. Um, but if it if it is what the news is making it sound like, it's you know Kawhi is just kind of not. Distant. Yeah, yeah, and like the Spurs, are like, hey, you're good to play, and Kawhi's like, I don't want to, but he didn't kind of like explain himself. He just kind of like ran away. Yeah, and so I don't know if that's the media narrative or if that's just the truth, but yeah, it's, no, it's a, a really good point, it's man. a messy situation. Very, very. I've never, I mean, we've never seen anything yeah. like this. Um, but no, I, I, I think, I think OKC is gonna end up beating the Rockets. I really don't know why. I. Even even after the game yesterday, man, Donovan Mitchell played like a beast. Yeah, beat the crap out of OKC. Yeah, he did in the in the third and the fourth, and I was like, oh, but it, gosh. it took the big three going over in the fourth quarter for the Jazz to win. Very true. That's very not true. gonna very, happen. Very yeah. true. And I and I hope it doesn't because I think OKC when they built this team, 
in the offseason. They were built to beat two teams. That's right. Golden State and that's Houston. Yeah. And Houston was beat to build Golden State. So yeah. I think it's going to be those two, and I'd love to see that Western Conference Final Series. I think it would be much more captivating than watching... Uh, as great as Houston is, right. Houston and Golden State, because yeah. it's just that, that chippiness of Russell, and he's looking at KD still, man, the mm. way he's looking at KD. I, I just think that's that's what I'd love to see in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. I'd be happy either way, um, and who knows? Maybe maybe Golden State loses. I don't know. Wow. I, so but, so, I don't so, so. You're, you don't trust the process. Man, Philly looks great, too. Philly and, looks and, great. And Joel Embiid is coming back. But we're see, about to get masked, Joel we're, we're Embiid. About to, we're about to get masked it's Embiid, which is going to be scary. crazy. Yeah, which is, which is scary. <laughs> um, but I will say this, man. When I – and I was, I was thinking, okay, Philly looks great as yeah. well in the East. Yeah. Um, but then I, I started – I really started just, and obviously this might be the analyst in us just yeah. overthinking yeah, yeah. everything. <laughs> but when I saw Embiid post that on Instagram, they're babying him yeah. too much. I was like, that is going to cause some tension and a rift yeah. with their gameplay. Yeah. And they're playing very, very right. well right now. Right. And even with that being said, they still lost the game in Philly. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, all it takes um, is that, that chemistry that they have building to just yeah. On click. And they're so young. And they're they're so young that that's why that I'm stuff thinking. That happens. Yeah. Exactly. There mm. there's no even though you've got a guy like Reddick who is a veteran that can help right. with that building process, yeah. but they I just think they're just too young right now. I think next year, man, mm. terrifying. Yeah. They're a oh, terrifying yeah. team yeah. next year. Who do you have winning it all? God, I hate, I hate <laughs> myself when I say this, dude. It's just that gut feeling in me and I know I, Maybe I'm maybe I'm right, but I just I don't know what it is. But I keep saying Cavs and okay. six and mute. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know what it is. They're not, and I I agree with everyone Ugh. saying they are. They don't look like the best team in right. the playoffs. They right. really don't. If anyone looks like the best overall, well, I wouldn't even say the Rockets because the Rockets almost right. lost game one. Right. Game right. two they played ridiculously yeah. well, but game one they almost lost. So it's yeah. like I I can't even say any, anyone's playing like a well-oiled machine. But it's something about LeBron, man. Yeah. And I, well, I, I mean, I agree with that. I mean, you look at, it, it seems like every year where where the Cavs come in not as the number one seed. Yeah. You know, I mean, where you know last year with the Celtics, you know, in past years with the Pacers or with the Raptors or yep. with the Hawks. Yeah. Back when the Hawks were good. Teague days, man. <laughs> exactly. Teague. You know, the dog, and then yeah. and then everybody's like, okay, Eastern Conference showdown, Cavs and whoever the number one seed is, and it didn't matter. The Cavs always won. Yeah. And you, know. and you can yeah you can say that the point guard depth isn't really there because they lost right. Kyrie right and then I was the biggest arguer for when they got Rose and Isaiah that that's gonna completely seal that up it did not at all um, <laughs> that was a lot I, I, yeah <laughs> it is now a Laker he's probably gonna get dropped in the summer and then Rose is in the playoffs right now with the Timberwolves yeah. but um, <laughs> and he's wearing a shooting sleeve now which is weird <laughs> I, I watched that last night I was like what the heck. Um, <laughs> But no, man, I, there's something about LeBron, and I think, you know, with adding guys like Hill, it's that seasoned vet as a Spurs yeah. fan, you know. I, j- yeah. Okay, I just side note real quick. I don't know how much time we have. I just want I just want to talk about why does Popovich say, or he said in an interview that Hill was his favorite player to coach? Tim Duncan. <laughs> I, Manu. Manu Ginobili. Tony Parker. <laughs> Hill? <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Hill's a great player. Right. Don't get me wrong. And I think uh, back to the top. I don't. I don't understand that at yeah, all. I, I don't but, Um, go ahead. Well, go ahead I, please. I have no idea. It's it's, it's just one it's of those. Weird. Thi- I mean, and, and maybe it's. I'm literally grasping at straws. Maybe it's that he's he's dealt with so much talent that like, you know, he kind of got to build George Hill and now gets to watch him kind of play on yeah. other teams. I don't know. Maybe. I, I will say I, I I do. He has said, like, you know, I, I bring up Manu, but I think he, he kind of hates coaching Manu because he's just so wild. And, yeah, I, I mean, like it, it pays his off. own coach, but, yes, man. Exactly. Manu's his own exactly. coach. That's a but, good point. Manu's his own coach, man. But, uh, no, I, I think um, something about the Cavs, man. I just I think Kevin Love is going to turn it on when he needs to turn it on, even though he got a dislocated thumb. <laughs> and he's going to be fine. He'll play game three. Uh, and I think just – Playoff LeBron. And, yeah. I, and I think they're going to go to the finals. And hopefully, I, I want to see them win it just because it makes LeBron's legacy that much more interesting. And I say that as a Kobe fan. Mm. Like, I, I, I really yeah. do think that it makes it that much more interesting. And plus, dude, I, feel, I just do not want to see Golden State win yeah. again. I, 
I don't. I mean, the three teams I don't want to see win are the Cavs, Golden State, and Houston. That's and fine. And, of course, they're, like, your three favorites. Yeah. You know, to win it all. That's but. fine. I'd love to. And you know what? I mean, super, super sleeper underdog, even though they're not super, super sleeper underdog. Okay, see, man. Like, if they could if they could end up doing it. That'd be wild. I'd be okay with it. Because, I mean, if you really look at it, Golden State is the only team that has won the first two games, and it looked sound. Yes. Now, sorry, I was against your Spurs. Well, yeah, no, no, but, but they did. Because the Cavs, well, the Cavs almost lost game two. Yeah. But they got beaten game one. Yeah. And then if you look at the other favorite, uh, Houston almost lost game one, beat down uh, the Timberwolves yeah. game two, and then OKC won soundedly in game one, and playoff then, P, yeah. and then game two they lost. <laughs> so it's like yeah. anything can really happen. Right, right. And so I'd love I'd love to see the Thunder go to the, the finals. Yeah. I really would love to see that. But if it isn't them... Uh, and I think it's gonna be Cavs Warriors again. The saga <laughs> okay. continues, and I, I I'd like to see LeBron beat Kevin Durant. Wow. I, I would. Yeah. Okay. Would. Well, last last question. Go for it. Going back to football. Okay. Because you've been around this Texas team a lot. Yeah. We've heard a bunch of good teams or a bunch of good things that this team is really looking good. You think this Texas team is really close to being back? Oh, we say this every year, dude. <laughs> Oh, hey, we say this every hey, year. Hey, Never we, hey, we got preseason 24 Never, in the uh, oh. way too early rankings. Yeah, way too early rankings. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Um, I don't – I'm going to say this. After watching the Notre Dame game two years ago yep. and hearing, Texas is back, <laughs> I hate the phrase Texas is back uh, now because – you think it, you believe it, you hope it, and they, it just doesn't happen. So yeah. I think this Texas team looks great. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of and, – and being – I wouldn't see uh, being in, in the internal operation of this because <laughs> I'm not. But knowing some of the players, right. seeing how they work, they look hungry. Yeah. They look like they want it, yeah. which is great. I think every player has to have that mentality, and they look like they're having fun with each other. Yeah. I don't know every single – you know inch in detail right, and nook right, and cranny about right. that. I mean, that's Herman. Yeah. Uh, it, maybe ne- <laughs> next week on the Thomas Bridge Sports Show, <laughs> Coach Herman. Um, That'd be incredible. But, uh, I wouldn't get a word out. Like, <laughs> but, hey, Coach. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, I think they're I think they're great. I think this Saturday is going to be fun to see just them having fun yeah. and to see maybe just the raw physical talents right. that a lot of them right. have. Um, I don't want to say they're back. Yeah. Give me till the third game. Okay, after USC? Give me till after you. Oh God! <laughs> I, <laughs> give me. You know what? Give me till after USC. Okay. Give me till okay. after USC, and okay. I will give you the phrase either. Give it another year, or Texas is back. Okay. I'll give you that. All right. Well. Yes. Awesome. So much fun getting yeah, you man, on absolutely. finally. Yes. Super. Super. Our first celebrity guest. Stop, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> oh, oh man. My gosh. All right. We'll be right back. All right. Really great interview with Ario. It was really fun to have him on. Um, and because because it was such a great interview, we kind of got to talking about the NBA playoffs. So there's no real need to address that or do the professional takes segment. So we're going to introduce a brand brand new segment. Um, I think this is going to be everybody's absolute um, fil- favorite segment. It's called Filler Golf. And basically the way the segment wor- or the kind of the description of the segment is, well, we have a little bit of time because we had a little intro talking football and baseball, and then we had Aria's interview, and now we need a little kind of filler before the before the, the podcast ends. And uh, we don't have a ton of time to really go more into the playoffs, so we're just going to talk about golf. And obviously not a lot of golf going on, uh, or not a lot of exciting golf. RBC Heritage um, you know, Open was last week, won by uh, Kadira in the playoff, which is exciting and stuff. Um, the Texas Open, Valero Texas Open this week down in San Antonio. But what I'm going to do, instead of boring you and saying, okay, so looking at the field, we got um, Kevin Chappelle, the re- remaining winner, and y'all are like, okay, who's Kevin Chappelle? Because I think, I think I don't know, I a lot of people kind of gave me some mixed results when I said that we weren't going to do an episode for Masters Week. I guess maybe I'm the only listener who really likes the Masters. That's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna, I think eventually by y'all listening to this podcast, um, y'all are going to really start to like golf. And that's, that's my goal is to get y'all to like, to like golf. That's, I'm doing your welcome PGA tour. I'm doing y'all a favor. I am. So if you want to hire me, I'm putting golf out there. I'm making, I'm making golf fun again. Everybody said that's Tiger's job. Tiger didn't win the masters. I'm doing that. <laughs> so let's, I, I think what, what I'm going to talk about today is just look at the, the next three majors, last three majors of the year, just kind of give brief, brief predictions of who I think can win them. 
Um, starting with the, the U.S. Open uh, in Shinnecock Hills, New York. Um, that's coming up. That's in June, a little over, well, a little under two months from now. Won't talk about the players because that's not, I mean, it's the fifth major. Great tournament. Um, but I want to focus on the U.S. Open. There are a couple kind of sleeper names that I think could win this. I think a guy like Tony Finau really has the length to maybe uh, to do something there. Kyle Sla- Stanley could be a sleeper name. Um, as far as the big names, I think we'll have to see how Spieth plays. You know, I think a lot of the big names play in the Masters and then kind of, you know, they they kind of take that whole, you know, couple months before the Masters as they're kind of tune up for it. And then a month after, they're just kind of, they go on vacation. They kind of try to fine tune their game before um, the summer schedule. And so, you know, I think most of the big names, we won't see them kind of until the players. But if Spieth can continue his momentum that he had, that he got um, after, uh, you know, in that final round of the Masters, if he can continue that, continue to really have that confidence in all aspects of his game, I think you got to put his name up there. Um, Dustin Johnson, always. I think he's kind of been quiet for a while. And I think I think because he's been quiet for a while, I think he's kind of prowling. He's, on, he's, he's ready to strike. So I wouldn't be surprised to see his name up there. A guy like John Rahm I think would be a popular pick. I think John Rahm is still a couple years away from winning his first major. If you watched him in the Masters, he was kind of in it for a while. Then he gets to hole 15, hits a ball in the water, and kind of you, you could just kind of see it snap mentally. And again, he's a young guy, um, but that's... That is one of the biggest things. That, that, that's why it's so tough to win a major. It's the mental aspect. You can have a great swing, but if you don't have it mentally, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to win. And so I think he's maybe not a couple years because he still is so talented. But I think he is. I I don't know if he's able to win a major this year unless he can really um, kind of fix his mental attitude and just get dialed in and locked in. Um, you know, and I think that's you can kind of tell like a guy like Spieth. Um, who is better at controlling his emotions than Rom? Maybe not great, but you kind of you know when he's locked in, and when he's locked in, like like on Sunday at the Masters, like when he won the British Open last year, you know you know that he's locked in, and he's going to stay locked in. A guy like John Rom, I I've, I've never really looked at him, and when he's been playing well, and said, oh, that's a guy who's locked in. I see a guy who's kind of riding the waves of emotions and isn't able to. I mean, Jordan Spieth makes the best bogeys. <laughs> you know, I tell you what, the way he finished. Um, his first round at the Masters this year, you know, when he hit it way into the pine, tr- you know, way left and had to pitch it out, hits it up to the green, chips on up and down for bogey. The way he had the bogey in the British Open last year, last year on that crazy hole where he had to take the drop and all that stuff, still manages to make a bogey. It's because he's locked in. And I haven't really seen John Rahm like that. Now, if he can find that that ability to lock in, then he's he's really dangerous and I think he can win a lot. But I think... Um, I think he's he's a couple, maybe a year away from from really year or two away from dominating the majors. I'll say that. Um, so those are kind of my picks for the the U.S. Open, um, the British Open. The first name. This is a guy that I really like to compete in the Masters, but you know Masters is tough when you're new to it. Guy Alex Norn, who's really exploded on the PGA Tour, coming from the European Tour. Um, I think he's got a great game. I think. Um, the British Open could really suit his game. Um, so I think he's he's um, still kind of one of those sleepers, but I think maybe a little bit more likely than Tony Finau or Kyle Stanley, maybe at the same level of Tony Finau, of guys who have won on the tour and who have looked good but haven't just quite won um, a major. you got to throw Kuchar in there. Um, I kind of feel like the British Open is definitely a tournament that can be won by old guys. Um, you know, that's why... Uh, what was it? Two years ago, when when Stinson and Mickelson just went back and forth. I mean, they. I think what was it? Stinson went like twenty under. So you got it. You got to throw those guys' names into it. We, you know, we haven't brought up Tiger's name. I really think this could be the tournament where Tiger kind of turns it on and really kind of finds his game. He's kind of found it at times, but he hasn't found it for a whole tournament. And I think um, he gets. He he has officially announced he's playing the U.S. Open. So I think if he can play in the U.S. Open, I don't think he wins it, but I think he kind of starts to get back in the rhythm of playing in majors and um, that whole flow. You know, because he's, he's been back playing for six months after not playing for a year, but really not even, um, you know, he hasn't been playing consistently on the PGA Tour four years, you know. And so um, I think getting back in the swing of things, I think by the British Open, there's a, there's a point where he could really um, possibly contend. 
Um, then going to the PGA Championship, um, I like JT maybe to uh, look to go back to back. I like Ricky Fowler there. I, th- I definitely think I feel like PGA ch- uh, Championships are definitely a place for a guy like Ricky Fowler. I mean, that's where um, no, no, uh, Dustin Johnson won the US Open. That's where you know Jimmy Walker got his first major. So I think I think Ricky. Uh, definitely a chance, but uh, you know, and I think going back to John Rom, I think if John Rom can kind of, again, he is still he's still young. If he can kind of get some momentum and kind of find the groove and find the mental groove, I think he has a chance to win there. But I, you know, I think I think this could be really fun. Is is a Ricky J T uh, final pairing on Sunday in the PGA Championship? So if that happens, if any of really any of those, I, I think predicting golf, whoever wins in golf, is maybe the hardest thing. I think betting on golf may be the dumbest. Like no offense. I just the reason I say that is because it's so unpredictable, you know, because it's just one guy, you know. It's like betting if Kevin Durant, like how exactly he's going to perform in every game throughout the whole playoffs. You know, it's one thing to bet on a team because you know, okay, Kevin Durant doesn't play good. Warriors can still play good without him, but you know, you don't really have that as a golfer, and so I think it's tough. So I'd just be happy if really one of those names that I threw out there um, comes to life. I'd love to see Ricky or or Kuchar win him. I love seeing guys win their first majors. As much as I love to see Jordan win, um, it'd be really cool to see either or both of them um, win that. Uh, anyways, that's going to do it for us this week on the Thomas Fitch Sports Show. I hope you enjoyed this week as much as I did. Really a blast having Aria on. Um, next week we'll have recap of the uh, Texas spring game and uh, more. You know, the NBA playoffs are going to continue. Maybe I'll watch some NHL, so maybe we could – uh, we could talk about hockey like for the first time on this podcast. That'd be fun. Um, but anyways, from the Thomas Fitch Sports Show, I'm Thomas Fitch. Hook'em horns. Take a look at